Zhang Li still stands as the only character ever to receive a major buff post-release. When he was first introduced, people were so outraged with his lackluster damage combined with his lackluster shielding that he was given a major glow up to become the impenetrable wall that we know and love today. He went on to probably become the most contentious character in the community, with lovers of comfy gameplay often rating him S tier and a must pull, and many theory crafters, meta players, and min maxers calling him a damage loss, non-essential, and B here at best. So let's talk about the real truth about Zhongli, if you personally actually need him, and how to best build him if you do. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Zhongli is an off-field defensive support with the strongest shield in the game, plus infinite interruption resistance while it's active. He's also a pretty strong debuffer and a somewhat lackluster off-field DPS, but can be decent if he's built for it. He is best utilized either by teams who essentially need need the interrupt resistance and damage mitigation, or by players who want to have a more comfy experience with the game. As I said, he is touted a must-have by some and a must-skip by others, so if you've been listening to lots of different perspectives, it can become really confusing. So let's talk about exactly why through his pros and cons. The first pro about Zhongli is obviously he has the thickest shield in the game. It's nigh impenetrable even if you build it mildly well. You just stack HP and you never ever die. He also has a 20% resistance shred which is similar to the Viridescent Venerar artifact set that you put on pretty much every animal character and so this can be really valuable for teams that are having a hard time fitting an animal resistance down character on there. Zhongli is also extremely flexible with his artifact choices. You can pretty much tailor it to whatever you need to fit your team. He has a really low resin investment required to get a lot of value out of him. Probably one of his biggest points is that his interruption resistance is extremely good. If you've got Zhongli's shield up, your character is never getting launched around, no matter what enemies are doing to you. So this lets you finish their optimal attack combos and generally get the most DPS out of that character. He has a lot of teams because of his resistance down and his shield is very universal. You can fit it on pretty much any team, although it's not usually usually optimal, and he is invaluable to certain teams, which we'll talk about later. For weaknesses, I think the main one is that he is almost always a damage loss compared to other options if you play your teams properly, which sometimes means going without a defensive option or using a substandard defensive option that enables you to get more damage. This can be mitigated in two ways. One is if you're just a casual player that doesn't mind not 36 starring the abyss, you just want to clear it, you just want to clear your weekly bosses and clear the hard content without having to worry, he's great for that. Or if you've kind of wailed out a bit on your characters or you've really highly invested in them that you can afford to run a comfort option like John Lee to get easy smooth clear time while still doing lots of damage or obviously using on those teams that he's optimal for. One of the big downsides for his splash ability is double geo used to be a really strong core in the game where you just slap John Lee and Albedo into any team. It's sort of similar to the double pyro core we have that everyone talks about now which with Bennett Zhang Ling or the double hydro core with Yolan and Sing Cho. The thing about the double geo core is it is essentially just got out outscaled damage wise by basically the double hydro core. A lot of times where you used to run a Zhongli, you can now run you, where you used to run a Zhongli Albedo, you can now run a Yalan Sing Cho. Sometimes you run Yalan and Sing Cho with Zhongli, such as for Hu Tao or other teams, but, but basically this used to be a two man core. You could just kind of throw in anything. And now it's sort of been outscaled by some recent Abyss iterations and by other two party member options that you can have. In that same way, the more off field options we end up getting, the more Zhongli tends to get damage crept by the game. So when characters like Nahida get released, it opens up a whole new th shred of off-field options that you can use, and Zhongli becomes a less good off-field option. His element really holds him back. A lot of other off-field options are really good because of the elemental damage bonus they bring, because of being a battery to their team based off of having the same element, or they provide a useful elemental resonance, which to be fair, Zhongli does if he's in double geo, but as we said, double geo has gotten weaker, and so he just doesn't have as good of synergy with the rest of the cast as a lot of other characters do nowadays. I think a lot of this stems from that he was an early Genshin character and so the devs didn't have a full idea of what they wanted to do with his kit hence why we needed the post release change and the biggest discrepancy in his kit really is that he is as an HP scaling shield but attack scaling damage and I think the idea of the devs not really knowing what they wanted to do with this character is showcased really well by his signature weapon. As you can see it's an attack percentage weapon so you'd think that it would be for a character that scales based 
off of attack. And it increases shield strength by 20%, scoring hits on opponents, increases attack 4% for 8 seconds. So the funny part is that this shield strength only affects when the character is on field. So by looking at this weapon, it's actually best for an on field character who is shielded. While Zhang Li, although he does have good scaling normal attacks, there's no way to infuse them with Geo. So if you build him for his normal attack, you're not getting any big burst damage, which is all his burst does. So essentially, in terms of the damage, it would be it's a it's quite a confusing kit. If he was released in modern Genshin, I would expect this to be an HP substat, and this would increase shield strength for the on field character or something like that, or increase his personal damage in some way. So that and I would expect his scalings instead of them to be innately attack scaling that he would scale based off of HP. So you could build him full HP and do pretty solid damage from his meteor. I don't think that this would unbalance him. As a result, as as it is, he currently does kind of lackluster damage unless you build him with Staff of Homa and some really good artifacts. That being said, for all I've been ragging on the guy, he's a really strong unit and the shield is nigh irreplaceable and it is by far the best shield in the game. So although he has a confusing kit, because they buffed his shield strength so much, he ends up coming out on top for that aspect anyways. So it's all good. But speaking of his best teams, let's talk about them. So Zhang Li is a character with two optimal teams and a lot of varied other options where he's sometimes optimal-ish and sometimes just an option. One team where he's nigh irreplaceable is Melt Ganyu. You can do Melt Ganyu with Dendro and Dia, but Dia's interruption resistance lat is so short lasting that Zhang Li is in my opinion always the superior choice. If you're going to play Melt Ganyu seriously, Zhang Li is basically a must. I highly, highly recommend it. It is probably Zhang Li's best team as it is the place where he's utilized the best. Gan Yu's insanely high personal scaling, she does something like 90 plus percent of the team damage on this team, means that you can get away with a bit less off-field damage from the Zhongli slot, so him missing out on some damage is not as big of a deal here. And the resistance to interruption he provides is absolutely essential because anytime your charge shot gets interrupted, you, use a you lose a massive chunk of your team's damage. In addition to that, the resistance shred he provides is very, very valuable on this team. Because it's a pyro-centered team, you and you apply so much pyro that you can melt off of, you really don't have nearly enough cryo application to actually get a cryo swirl. And as such, the best resistance down this team has access to is Zhang Li. So this team really fully utilizes Zhang Li, and it even can utilize his meteor, even if the damage is not as impactful. The crowd control it provides can help you set up your team rotation smoother. And so overall, this is his number one spot. But he is equally necessary for the optimal in Mono Geo. As you can see, I don't have any of the characters for Mono Geo get them as soon as they rerun. But Mono Geo is a team that needs, albeit a lot of expensive pieces to fully make work, it's a team that's really strong and really versatile once you've invested into it. And Zhang Li is a necessary part to bring this team to the max. A lot of people don't realize when they're looking at the Enduring Rock Geo Resonance, because so sometimes they recommend that, that this team's next best slot is Albedo, and then the Zhang Li slot is the flex, where actually the Zhang Li slot is the required slot, and the Albedo slot is a flex. This is because Enduring Rock Rock not only does it increase shield strength by 15%, but characters protected by a shield will have the following special characteristics: damage dealt increased by 15%, dealing damage to enemies will increase their geo, will decrease their geo resistance by 20% for five seconds. So this geo resonance is really, really important, and you essentially need a shield to have proper geo resonance. So if you're gonna, if you're not gonna run Zhang Li, you need to run something like Toma or Kirara or something weird to get your geo resonance. Or obviously, if you are using Noel as the on-field, you don't need Zhang Li quite the same, but the further 20% geo resistance shred that Zhongli provides from his shield is also extremely, extremely valuable for the Noel team. So overall, Zhongli is a must have for that mono geo core, and it's a really, really solid team if you want to invest into it. So if you're looking for must have teams, these are the two. But there also are some comfort teams where he's not quite a must have because the other variants of the team slightly out damage the Zhongli variants. But if you're a character that like, if you're a player that likes comfort, then he could be considered a must have for the team. One of these is Yoimiya. Zhang Li with double geo with Yunjin actually is her highest ceiling team that is shielded. Technically, if you do Bennett in Yunjin slot and Kazuha in the other slot, you can get some double swirl setups, which will outpace any Zhang Li variant. But it can be really annoying to play Yoimiya when she gets interrupted all the time. So if you're not a really skilled player, you don't or you get annoyed by being interrupted, then the Zhang Li double geo variant is going to be her best team. Similarly for Hu Tao, although I have become comfortable even at C0 playing Hu Tao, 
Tao very easily with just Sing Cho's interruption resistance, damage mitigation, Hu Tao's own innate interruption to resistance, which stacks on top of Sing Cho's, and Hu Tao's personal healing. As long as you're not playing Shimanawa Hu Tao, then I find that you have plenty of resist, plenty of utility and defensive utility on this team, which does allow you to go for a more damaging option like Fischl in this slot. However, most people aren't on the same page with me on this. Most people don't love Hu Tao's playstyle, especially at C0 when you're constantly getting interrupted. And if you don't know the enemy attack patterns, they can hit you and do tons of damage and you're already on life support. So they really want some sort of shielder in the last slot. And Zhongli is the perfect, perfect partner here because he not only provides you that interruption to resistance, that interruption resistance, that shielding, but he decreases the resistance to not both Hydro and to Pyro, which is something that would be really hard to do with Kazuo. Normally, if you run Kazuo in this slot, which you definitely can, you're only going to swirl Hydro and you're just going to kind of give up swirling Pyro because it's just not a really viable setup. So as a result, running Zhongli in the slot is not nearly as much of a damage loss as other characters, as some other teams would be. And so he ends up being the premier comfort choice for Hu Tao. Zhao is in a similar boat where although the ceiling teams of Zhao don't run Zhongli, it's really hard to get away with enough comfort without Zhongli. In addition, if you don't have C6 bars on, Zhongli still remains this one of the ceiling supports for Zhao because that animal resistance down is really valuable and you need to be running Farazan to get it. And to have proper uptime on it, you need those high constellations. So with C6 Farazan, Zhao would rather run Bennett, Farazan, and even someone like Yulan or Fischl or Shangling or some other off-field damage dealer is going to contribute more to Zhongli. And you just have to get good at timing as plunges to dodge those attacks. But again, if you don't have C6 Farazan or if you just want that comfort, then Zhongli is the best option. And the DPS is really, really high. It's not like you absolutely need that DPS. I just want to make sure you're you're aware of the fact that you can get away without running Zhongli and have even better results on these characters like Zhao, Hu Tao, Yoimiya. I'm aware, and I know there's going to be tons of comments about this, that these characters are hard to play without that shielder. But I just don't want you to be pressured that you need Zhongli to bring out their full potential. But I don't believe this is the case for Ganyu. I do believe that Ganyu needs Zhongli to bring out her full potential. Kazuha or Shenha or something else like that is just not practical. You're going to get hit out of your charge attack animation. And with really aggressive enemies, the same is true for Yoimiya actually because it's going to be really hard to finish that attack string when there's for example two consecrated beasts running at you there's just no way you're going to be able to get through that without Zhongli so if you're Yoimiya main although I said that the optimal teams don't use Zhongli I would recommend going for Zhongli just so you have that option there for when there is a really aggressive abyss that you have that option and I, and I would say for all of the characters that I'm talking about for Zhao for Hu Tao for Yoimiya if you're maining these characters even if Zhongli is not always the most optimal slot it can be the most optimal for those really really aggressive abysses this is where we get into that discussion of sort of practicality versus optimality you do want to consider optimality so you can reach that point but the reality is sometimes the abyss is really really tough and you need that defensive utility and Zhongli is the best for the teams we've talked about so far same could be said for Linny although I have found that Linny is one of the easier characters to get away without Zhongli just because he's not as tied to charging up those charge attacks as much he also gets a lot of value from his skill and burst nukes so missing a charge shot here and there is not nearly as a big of a deal as it is with Ganyu but if you want his most comfortable team replacing Kazuha for Zhongli maybe even giving him the archaic Petra artifact set or set that allows you to give a pyro damage bonus to your entire team when you create a crystallized reaction can mitigate some of the damage loss from losing Kazuha. Next is Alhaitham spread teams. Zhongli has a good place on this team because there's no way to swirl dendro damage and since you're doing the most damage with your dendro unit Zhongli being the defensive option offers more than potentially someone like Kuki because she doesn't offer she gives you some electro particles for Yai some good healing but that's about it whereas Zhongli gives you that interruption resistance which can be really nice for Yaimiko for Nahida and for Alhaitham that electro and dendro red and he can even be the one holding the deep wood memories artifact set so your Nahida and Alhaitham can be on full damage build so he's actually a really solid choice if you're going the spread Alhaitham route I personally like the, the hyper bloom route a little bit better but maybe I'll give an updated review after I try the Zhongli variant of spread I do think it's a bit better overall you can also run in with Sino. He does have some pros over Baiju because although Baiju does activate that Dendro Resonance, which is helpful for Sino's overall team damage, and this is the best team for Sino, Zhongli's Interruption Resistance is a little bit better. <laughs> so he is a pretty solid choice for Sino here. You can also run Zhongli as the final slot in a normal Hyper Bloom team. This is actually my wife's favorite team. You have EM Raiden, Damage Yulan, and on-field Nahida, and Zhongli is providing the shield. You can also use Zhongfield as the physical attacking on-fielder in this team. If you want to use Crescent Pike Zhongli and use his uh use his autos this is probably the best way to run on field zhongli and do a lot of damage he even gets some buffing from yulan 
and it's a team that you can absolutely full star the abyss with on fielder Zhang Li. So that's really, really neat. Probably the most brain dead team in the game because Raiden's skill lasts so long. You just have to make sure that you keep up Yolan's burst, keep up Nahida's skill, and you can on field with basically anybody on this team and you're going to slap hard. Really good. You can also run Cryo Zhang Li with Shenha buffing his normals, Chong Yun buffing Cryo, Kazo buffing Cryo, and then Zhang Li once again being on field doing Cryo damage. For how to build him, Zhongli's level can easily stay at 80 out of 90. You can even skip the last ascension, although you will get the most shield out of him by taking him to 90. What I would do is I would take him to 80 out of 90, see if his shield is strong enough, take his shields to 8 and 8, see his shield, see how strong it is. If you find you don't die, if you find it's totally fine, you can save your resources and not do that final ascension, not take his talents past 8. I said you could do 8 and 8, but if you don't use his burst, you could actually just do the skill for 8. But you, if, if you're going to use his burst, which I will definitely is just too cool not to but that's the main thing going to 90 probably not as necessary unless you just want to absolutely max out his shield because again his damage doesn't scale from his shield so even if you want the most damage you can get that final ascension you can take his talents to, to nine for his burst i would probably leave the skill at eight forever you most likely just don't need all that shielding but if you do want to build into his artifact which we'll talk about next as a more damage oriented build potentially taking him to 90 getting his skill to a higher level so you can build him for damage more on his artifact then that could be a good choice. I just realized that Wanderer is another character you might consider getting Zhongli for, although in his case it's a little different because Layla and Toma can actually have a higher ceiling if played properly as the shield for Wanderer. But for his artifacts, your best overall set is going to be the Tenacity of the Melilla, giving you a plus 20 HP. So I know I've been saying that mostly Zhongli scales off of attack. It's sort of true, sort of not true. He does have a passive that converts damage bonus from his HP. So the higher HP he has, the more damage he does. HP Sands will actually give you even more damage than an attack sands because of this passive but the actual scaling of his birth is just from attack alone so therefore it's always recommended to go hp sands because he does have that conversion you never really go attack sands on zhongli it's just not losing worth losing out on that shield strength you lose very little damage if any or even gain damage from going for an hp sands for the goblet if you're just going shield bot you're not really planning on doing damage with him you want to do hp but if you're happy with the shielding you want to get more damage out of him then you want to go geo damage bonus goblet i'm sorry i don't even know if i've ever leveled up a geo damage bonus there's one yeah geo damage bonus and then for the circlet you're going to want to go with crit rate or crit damage if you're building attack damage focus Zhongli. and again just hp if you want to use just the shield bot build so again tenacity is the most universal set that's the one that most people are going to go for increased shield strength more hp for more damage and for more tankiness but going for the archaic petra artifact set can be a really good choice too it gives Zhongli a 15 percent geo damage bonus so this will be the two piece that you want to use to get the most damage out of him and the four piece when you create an elemental shard through the crystallized reaction all party members gain a 35 percent damage bonus for that particular element for 10 seconds and it can only be done on one type so this is actually pretty good for teams that do a lot of damage with just one type so in a double hydro core or in a mono pyro core such as with Linny, then this will be the artifact set that gives you the highest ceiling the only issue with it is picking up a crystallized shard with Zhongli, and it has to be with Zhongli. it can't be with someone else is kind of a pain in the butt you might find yourself running around grabbing a crystallized shard and so not really really always the best use of your time but it is his ceiling damage set for himself and for the team on a lot of teams you can also go with something like noblesse to give an attack buff to the team although tenacity will generally be better he can have some issues with the tenacity sometimes his pillar gets destroyed or sometimes it's out of range of the enemy so you don't always get the greatest time on tenacity and plus from noblesse you get that burst damage so they both sort of have their pros and cons alternatively you can just run a two-piece tenacity and a two-piece varukasha's glow varukasha's glow also giving an 80 percent so that would be for the beefiest strongest shield and also again he does get some damage for that AP, so that could be a good, a good option as well finally as i mentioned before he can run the deepwood memories artifact set if you're in a dendro team and it's actually a really good option because a lot of times having him on this set and then having someone like nahida transition to a damage build can be a good damage gain for your team again it will require his pillar not to get destroyed but it still does last for eight seconds so a lot of times even if it does get destroyed you can switch back into him and reset it for on field physical zhongli you can either do two piece of the blood stained two piece of the pale flame or of course the four piece pale flame and obviously cryo zhong li is going to want to use blizzard's trailer there is also some merit on putting him on an instructor's artifact set as another form of buffing this is going to substantially weaken his shield because it's a four star set but because his shield is so strong at a base if you build him and invest into him and because he doesn't need to build any er the instructor is a really solid choice for reaction teams such as the hu tao team we mentioned yoimiya potentially even the alhaitham team if you're going to be running if you're going to be running deep put on your nahi 
Nikita. Whew, this guy has a lot of options. For polearm, his best in slot general polearm is either going to be Favonius Lamb, which can give him ER to the rest of the team. The only issue with it is his pillar only hits once when you're casting it. So you might have to build a very high amount of crit rate on him to make sure you get it activated. Staff of Homa is going to be his best choice for a hybrid shielding damage team and generally his best in slot overall if you have it and if you're not using it on a character that does more damage because it gives you that HP buff plus a lot of stats. You can also do something like the Black Tassel for increased HP. Other good options, this is from the Kaching Mains website, check it out, are the Wavebreaker's Finite High Refinement, Calamity Queller, the Catch, Deathmatch, Jadewing Beer, his signature weapon, all the stuff you'd usually expect for a damage dealing polearm user. These are going to be his best damaging options, whereas as I said earlier, just Black Tassel or Favonius Lance depending on what your team needs. If you're using physical Zhongli, there's no question about it, the Crescent Pike is far and away the best. It's kind of a ridiculous option and he's still currently the best user of the Crescent Pike. For vertical investment, his C1, basically the biggest pro is it's going to give you more consistent tenacity of the Melith uptime. Since you can now have two pillars active instead of once, it will be a small increase in his damage. Constellation 2 is his best constellation for co-op. So by using his burst, you also give a shield to your co-op. Why is this not in English? And it does also give you a shield, so you don't always have to use your skill if you're using your bird in that scenario. Constellation 3 just gives his, his skill levels, which is not that great. Constellation 4, pretty nice. Increases the AoE of your Meteor and increases the petrification effect. But for a C4, it's kind of underwhelming. C5 increasing his burst damage, and then C6 converting incoming damage into that character's health restoration, which his shield is so strong already that it's kind of not that useful, and ruining synergy with characters that want to keep their HP below 50%, such as Hu Tao. So overall, one of the worst constellations of the game, probably, and he's definitely a product of the early Genshin Impact, not exactly knowing what they're doing with character kits and constellations, but fortunately, again, that means he's really, really solid at C0 and the best shield bot in the game. So let's move on to comparing him to other forms of defensive utility, which is really the thing that holds him back the most. Now you might think that Zhongli's biggest competitor is someone like Toma or Layla or even Kirara for the shields that they provide. And while you're kind of right, they do occupy the same role in some teams. The biggest issue Zhongli fails is the competition of a unit like Bennett. Not all characters need that interruption resistance, or even if you would like it, they can get away without it. So by having a unit like Bennett in the game, if if let's say that Bennett's healing is put on equal ground with Zhongli's shield, which it's not, but let's say that you can get away without the interruption resistance, Bennett is also a Pyro unit that provides energy to characters like Zhang Ling and Linny, whereas Zhang Li, a Geo unit, only provides energy to Geo units like, like Ido, or at least noticeable energy. So he's losing out already on one utility front. Plus, Bennett's attack buff is way sky high better than Zhang Li's resistance thread. Zhang Li's resistance thread is nice, but Bennett's attack buff is way bigger. What about another competitor? We look at Kakomi, another off field defensive uti unit utility. You really only have space on a, on a team for one defensive unit. Anytime you go more than that, although it can be good, you lose so much damage. So again, if you're not trying to 36 star the abyss, then it's fine. It's totally fine. But if you are trying to 36 star the abyss, every unit needs to bring damage to the table. And Kokomi, she fulfills that defensive option, but she also provides very valuable hydro application, which in a lot of teams adds to more damage. And she can provide buffing if she use something like Rolling Pale. Compared to a unit like Kirara, let's say, yes, her shield is weaker, but let's say you can get away with the weaker shield. Well, Kirara can provide Dendro Resonance, Dendro Particles, and most importantly, applying the Dendro Element, which is just so much more useful than applying the geo element. So for all these reasons, the benefits that Zhongli provides are, are his power balance is skewed more towards comfort. And so as you try and min max and min max, that's where he loses some value. That being said, I really stand by what I said about characters like Yue Mia, about Hu Tao, Zhao. If you want to have the most flexible teams for them possible and be able to use them in every iteration of the Abyss, especially aggressive Abysses, then getting someone like Zhongli is invaluable. For overall and aesthetic, he is one of the best aesthetic units in the game. His burst is beautiful, his shield is beautiful, his design is absolutely magnificent. I love everything about it. He's also really useful in the overworld for mining. His skill absolutely annihilates all the cores all over, so he's very, very useful for overworld and aesthetic. And for future prospect, I think he does have actually some potential if we get more mono teams and mono-based characters that can't use animal. Because if a character can't use animal to shred the resistances, then someone like Zhongli's resistance shred 
neighborhood becomes that much more valuable. So I'd be on the lookout for more Dendro DPSs, more Geo DPSs, and maybe if they very sneakily design some kind of character that somehow doesn't work with Animo for one reason or another, then Zhongli could get improved by that. I don't think they'll ever power creep him as a shielder, so I think that he's a really safe pull if you think you need him. I would also like to say for my personal experience, I was convinced not to get him by Theory Crafters and people that were min maxers, and I, and I really regret not getting him. So if you're on the fence, I think you should get him because I regret not getting him because sometimes I just wish I had that comfort, even though I know that I can use Bennett Kazwa here. I really want to be able to use Zhongli for those times where I just need that extra comfort. For Hu Tao, not so much, but for Yoimiya, I really do wish I had it. And for Ganyu, I absolutely think it's necessary. So I'm, I'm going to be getting him as soon as possible and don't feel like he's a must pull unless he's for your Ganyu team or your Mono Geo team, but know that if you choose to get him, he will be very flexible and most likely valuable if you followed my advice in this video. If you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing. We've gone full time in the channel now and every single subscription helps. YouTube ad revenue is very inconsistent, so I am very grateful for those of you that have chosen to support me on Patreon or with YouTube memberships. If you'd like to check those out and you value the content where you we're doing here and you want to support me and my family, definitely feel free to. If you want help with your account, feel free to join our Discord. We've got an amazing community that can help you there. And if you don't want to do any of those things, that is totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.